Hi, I'm Krishna and I'm a language lover. Welcome to part four of how to create a phonological system. Today we're going to talk about a complex phonological system. If you have not seen the other three parts, I suggest you start with part one. You can click up here to um, find part one and then go through to part two and three. And today is part four which shows you um, quite a complex both um, consonant and vowel system and also some more complex uh, rules to put those sounds together into words. And of course, I present to you a sample text in, of this invented phonological system. So as usual, let's start with the consonants. I uh, produced a complex consonant system. It has 30 consonants. Um, I'm gonna read them to you aloud as well. Um, note that 30 consonant is not that much in human languages. There are quite some languages that have way bigger inventories of consonants, but usually um, they then use different uh, methods of pronouncing um, these consonants and usually then you have aspirated consonants or ejective consonants or um, uh, those kind of uh, different stops so that really makes your whole consonant inventory bigger. Let's go through the table of the 30 consonants. Let's start with the labial consonants as usual. I'll always give you three times each phoneme, once where it's at the beginning of a syllable, then in the middle of a syllable, and then at the end of a syllable, as usual. Let's start with the labial ones. Pa, apa, ab. Ba, aba, ab. Fa, afa, af. Va, ava, av. Note that um, all the previous, previous systems didn't have voiced fricatives. Um, English actually has quite a lot of voiced fricatives, but many languages around the world don't have voiced fricatives or not that many. So I only introduced them in the complex um, consonant inventory. Ma, ama, am, wa, awa, aw. Let's continue with the dental or alveolar consonants. Ta, ata, at. Da, ada, ad. Tha, atha, ath. Tha, adha, adh. Na, ana, an. La, ala, al. Now the sibilants. Again, here I have the written version. Uh, here I have the written uh, version of the consonant, and here is the IPA version of that same sound. Za, atza, atz. Da, adza, adz. Sa, asa, as. Za, azza, az. And ra, ara, ar. Let's continue with the alveolo palatal consonants, or some call them just palatalized affricates. Cha, acha, ach. Ja, aja, aj. Note that the normal J in this system is pronounced z, and the J with a little Hat check on top. This is this inversed hook is a ja actually. Sha, asha, ash, ja, aja, aj, nya, anya, any, and ya, aya, ai. Now the velar and uvular consonants ka, aka, ak, ga. Aga, ag, kha, acha, ach, ra, ara, ar. You'll notice these consonants sound a bit rougher 
um, many Semitic languages like Ar Arabic or Hebrew have them, um, but also like German has both of these consonants. Nga, anga, ang, ra, ara, ar. That's the English R. Um, I've put it into the Vila uh, row. Well, you might uh, discuss if it's on the right uh, row here, but it's just for convenience, it fit in here. Now, finally, the glottal uh, consonant ha, aha, ah. Languages that have a similar consonant inventory to this one could be Welsh, so that's the Celtic language spoken in Wales, or Albanian spoken on the, um, in the Balkans, Pashto, which is a language spoken um, uh, in uh, the Iran, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan area, or Georgian, which is spoken in the Caucasus, all these languages have a more complex consonant uh, inventory. Sometimes they also have like a third row of stops, not only voiceless and voice stops, but um, all these languages have kind of a similar structure in their consonant inventory. Let's continue with the vowels. I chose 14 different vowels. Note that that's actually quite a lot. Um, and I chose a little trick, if you so want, uh, that I have long and short con uh, vowels, um, but they also differ in the quality of the vowels. So even if you pronounce all of them shortly, they still sound a bit different. Um, for some of you, it might be quite difficult to hear the difference if you're not used to hearing them. But by practice, by repeating them, by listening to languages who have those differences, you can learn to distinguish them more and more. As indicated, languages like German, Hungarian or Thai have similar vowel systems. Usually they have shorter and longer vowels. Um, in German, pretty much every vowel um, also has like a quality, vowel quality difference. So, but um, also Hungarian has short and long vowels, Thai has short and long vowels. No, and again, none of these languages has exactly this system. Let's go through the table of vowels. I will always pronounce the vowel short and then long, even if perhaps in our language now this is not always the case, so they're either short or long, but I'm going to give you a short and a long version of each of these vowels. E, 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 a, a, and the front rounded vowels that you can find in German, Hungarian, Turkish, even Chinese has one of those. U, 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 and then the back rounded vowels. U, U, O, O, O. O, 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 and A, A. In real, as I told you, the language distinguishes long and short vowels, so they would actually be E, 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 A, A, U, E, U, E, U, O. O, o. These are the vowels of this invented phonological system. For this complex system, I decided to have one phonological rule, if you so want, the vowel harmony, which appears in quite some languages all around the world in different forms. Vowel harmony means that in every single word 
of the language there is a restricted number of vowels that are allowed in this word and usually there are categories of vowels so in a given word all the vowels belong of to one of these three classes and I decided these three classes B now you will probably recognize them already the E is actually all the front unrounded vowels then the U class is the front rounded vowels and then the U class is the back rounded vowels so the first class the E class is composed of the vowels E, I, E, E and A and the U class is composed of U, E, Ö, Ö and the U class is composed of U, O, 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 O so in any given word you only have vowels of one of those three classes that makes the um, word sound more similar or it's the, the the mouth has less work to do in a single word let's go through some examples possible words would be you took mohal See fear, thorum, danyach, kujup, gojun, hewel. Notice that in each of these words you only have vowels from one of those three groups. There's no mixed words. Before going into the phonological rules, um, I want to show you again the complex consonant, syst a consonant inventory. Notice that the group K is actually a, composed of all the voiceless stops, so P, T, T, Ch, K. Then the group S is composed of all the voiceless fricatives, F, Th, S, Sh, Ch, and H. Then the nasal group is composed of M, N, N, and Ng, so all the nasals and the liquids are le, r, r. Voila, the phonotactics of the complex system are there's a basic root composed of a consonant and a vowel. We've seen this before, easy. One consonant, one vowel. Then there's the complex roots which are composed of a consonant, a vowel, another consonant, another vowel, and a third consonant and this third consonant belongs to either the groups K, S, N and L that we've just seen and of course in all this there's vowel harmony that's why I introduced this first so what does that mean you have basic roots like ka, ni, du, ro, hu and then you have complex roots. Those were the basic roots and the complex roots have a longer form. You've already heard some in the examples before. For example, nekil, rüdeng, schokuch, röyöt, hines, juduk, tarem, lavis, vesic all those complex roots are composed of one two three consonants the last consonant is either a voiceless consonant a voiceless fricative a voiceless stop sorry a voiceless fricative a nasal or a liquid so there's no voiced um, stops or fricatives at the end of a complex root and all the vowels follow the vowel harmony that we've already seen. Let's go again through them. Ka, ni, du, ro, hu, nekil, rüden, shakuch, royut, hines, joduk, tarem, lavis, vesic. Now that we've seen how to produce roots, 
Now we learn how to produce words out of roots. Every word is composed of at least one basic root, which is the consonant vowel root, and possibly one complex root in front of it. And it can also be, in brackets you see, be more than one basic root. So you can have either a basic root or a complex root and a basic root, or a basic root and a basic root, or a complex root and two basic roots, and so on and so on. And of course, always you have vowel harmony. Vowel harmony is really going through the whole um, phonological system of this language, as it often does, as in Turkish or Finnish, for example. So let's see. These words would be, example words would be T, which is just a basic root, menu, which is two basic roots, la, se, also two basic roots, geyarzi, which would be a, a complex root and a basic root, düründe, again a complex root and a basic root, tarashko, yedimri, Grötü, Lihimnegi, Jazonyu. All these words are producible or you can produce with this simple rule. Before getting to the sample text, I would like to get back to the vowels and to show you that there's um, five heights in the vowel system. For example, the mid-high vowels would be i, e, u, and o, depending on the class they belong to. The sample text. One thing I want to explain to you immediately is that I marked these three words here with the du, the di, and the de. You'll notice that they are all uh, a D followed by a, a high mid vowel. Actually, those three um, suffixes or uh, syllables are actually the same word, but they change because the root before them has a different vowel class. So the vowel harmony dictates that this uh, vowel after the D has to be. Um, high mid vowel but of class E. This is class U and this is class U. But in fact these three syllables are the same, same word. They might either indicate a genitive or an accusative or perhaps a locative so it means in, in or at something. So this is how this phonological system works. Now let me read the sample text to you. Uh, this time I decided to just have the written version and the phonetic version because the phonemic version would uh, barely be different. Yeah. Ho de la kuthus nu charich la king at pi leu gerimze ne gajalnio voral gadu thu chlyuchtu me tsanu ferithmi kudus tsu ja zirengdi romutlo wo fati moshonra sona tu shiteliedi Bozuljo we janir ke fowashko ho didzemi jale ni kumel vude. With this text, you can see that a complex uh, system, phonetic system can actually uh, be quite challenging. Even me, I had to concentrate to really pronounce every uh, sound correctly. Maybe I may have done some, some small mistakes. Um, 
So when you design a phonological system, take care that you do not go for too big inventories or too complex rules. And I mean, these rules here for making words are actually quite simple. It's consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, perhaps, perhaps consonant and one consonant, so two consonants close to each other, but that's about it. The more complex your rules get, the more complex it also gets to the speaker to pronounce it. And if you want to pronounce a language, um, um, yeah, then you probably want to have your phonological system not too complex. That was it. Thank you for your attention. Um, I've been working on these, uh, these four short videos for quite some time and I finally filmed them, made them available so you can learn from them, you can um, get inspirations from them, you can criticize them. So I would be really glad if you uh, would comment on this video, what you're interested in, what further questions you have. And perhaps one or the other person feels inspired to create a conlang, an augslang, whatsoever. I took care that um, these uh, phonemes that I chose are actually comparatively common still. So I didn't choose any phonemes that are completely weird or crazy. So all these phonemes show up in a lot of languages around the world, in big languages around the world. Yeah, I hope you share my passion for having fun with languages and I hope to see you soon. Bye.